This Plinko feature video will cover performance improvements. One of the first questions people always ask us about Plinko is do we have any performance statistics? Well, we do have some great articles about the speed and performance of Link to SQL compared to other frameworks. Plinko's primary plan for performance improvement is simple. Reduce the number of trips you need to make to the database. A round trip to the database and back can be one of the most costly things an application can do. But it's also one of the most common things an application must do. Plinko offers several easy-to-use features that can drastically reduce database transactions, but it's up to the developer to implement them. This demonstration is using the latest tracker sample application, which can be downloaded at codesmith.googlecode.com. The only modifications that have been made to the solution are that I have added some new unit tests for this video. These tests are going to cover batch updates and deletes, stored procedures using multiple result sets, and batch queries. Also, we're going to be using the link to SQL profiler by hibernating rhinos. For more detailed information about that application, please watch our link to SQL profiler video or visit l2sprof.com. So let's begin by looking at batch updates. Batch updates are a way to make link to SQL generate an update statement instead of just a select statement. Notice that on the end of all the tables on the data context, there is now a new method called update. This method takes in two link expressions. The first expression is used to select the rows that are going to be updated, and the second expression is used to determine what the set action will be. So in this example, we'll be updating all tasks where the status is in progress, and we're going to update their status to done. So let's go ahead and run this unit test. I'm going to go ahead and step down for a second. And now I'm going to clear out the profiler because it caught all the things that happened on our test fixture setup. And now as I step over this step, you'll see that Flinko generated one statement for the database, and that was indeed an update statement. It selected all tasks where the status was equal to in progress, and it updated them and set status ID to 6, or done. So as you can see, it's a very easy to use tool that is also very powerful. It's going to allow you to update multiple records in the row without being forced to materialize the entities first. So now let's take a look at batch deletes. Batch deletes are very similar to batch updates, but this time instead of generating an update statement, we'll be generating a delete statement. Once again, all the tables on the data context now have a delete method exposed. And this method takes in two overrides. First is the primary key for your table. So in this case, an integer for task ID. And the second is another link expression. And in this case, it's the expression that will be used to select the rows that are going to be deleted. So in this example, we're going to get a task ID. And by the way, this is coming from our test fixture setup. And then we're just going to call delete against it. And then beneath it, we're going to generate another delete statement. And this is going to delete all rows for task where the status is equal to in progress. So once again, let's go ahead and run this with the debugger. And I'll step through and clear out the profiler. Now, as we step over these two statements, we can see that two delete statements were generated. The first by primary key, in this case we passed in 32, and the second was by status ID, where that was equal to 2. So just like the batch update, batch delete is a very powerful tool that is going to allow you to delete multiple records in your database without ever having to materialize them first. Now let's take a look at stored procedures. So what we're going to be working with here is a very simple stored procedure called get users with roles. And all it's going to do is bring back two select statements, a user and the user role. Now Link to SQL does support stored procedures, but not with multiple result sets, which would mean you can only bring back one select of one type. With Plinko, we're going to be able to bring back both of these select statements of different types and then cast them into appropriate collections. So notice that we call get users with roles directly off the data context. We put that into an I multiple result set result value. And then we go ahead and iterate through that, getting the results and casting them to their appropriate types. So because the first statement was a select from user, we first get the results for user and put them into a list. And then we do a select from user role. So we get result for user role and put that into a list as well. So let's go ahead and run this. And I'll clear out the profiler. And now as we step over this, we can see that only one call was made to the database. It did indeed execute the stored procedure. And if we look back at our code, we can see that it brought back six users and two user roles. 
So this is how Plinko makes stored procedures a little bit more valuable and allows you to make less trips to the database to bring back more data. And last but not least, let's take a look at the batch queries. So batch queries are going to allow us to run multiple queries with a single trip to the database. Here we create two queries, one using Lambda expression, one using link syntax. The first is selecting tasks where status is in progress, and the second is just selecting all users from the database. We then take those two queries and pass them into the execute query method on the data context, and this accepts any number of params, so this can be an unlimited number of queries. Then that will give us back to us a multiple results set object, similar to what we had with the stored procedures. And then again, we're going to go through and iterate through that result set, setting our results to the appropriate types in the appropriate order. So first we queried tasks, and then we queried users. So here we're going to get results for tasks and put them into a list, and get results for users and put them into a list. So let's go ahead and run that. Now if we step over this, we can see that one statement came into, or I'm sorry, one query came into the um, database, but that contained two queries. The first was selecting tasks, and the second selecting users. So batch queries are a major performance improvement, because linked to SQL doesn't give you a way to batch up multiple statements when you uh, want to get multiple sets of data at the same time. However, if you're interested in using batch queries, I strongly recommend you take a look at our Futures video, as Plinko has another feature called Future Queries that makes batch queries easier to use by abstracting away the logic of the execute query from you. That concludes this video over performance improvements. We hope you found it helpful and informative. To watch more Plinko feature videos, please visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont. Thank you for using Plinko.